Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is the next little mini series within that playlist. This topic is going to deal with one way random effects ANOVA. And this is part one of six. I'm just going to call it model development. And so here, the experiment, the experimental design is completely randomized. As a simple example, Machines that box cereal, and let's say there's a thousand of machine, a thousand machines, and we call them M1 through M1000, and we feel like they produce, you know, or they fill boxes, you know, all pretty similarly, and so we take a sample of size 10 of these machines, and then we look at the mean ounces packed per box. So the, there are A factor levels are randomly selected from a, a population of factor level of interest. So in this example, since we looked at 10, we randomly picked 10 of these 1000s, A would be 10. So we have 10 factor levels randomly selected from a population. Now, in the previous uh, mini-series, we looked at fixed effects where tau 1 through tau a are fixed unknown parameters but here they're random effects and so we call them tau 1 through tau a and but they're iid normal random variables with the mean zero and, and variance sigma tau squared now the model in scalar form is this yij is equal to mu plus tau i plus epsilon ij I goes from 1 to A, J goes from 1 to N. Now, the tau I's are, like I mentioned, are IID, that's identically independent and identically distributed, normal random variables, mean zero, variance, sigma tau squared, epsilon IJ, or IID, normal zero, sigma squared. The tau's IJ's are independent of the epsilon IJ's for all IJ. Sigma squared tau and sigma squared are called the variance components of this design. The sigma tau squared was called the between treatment variance, and the sigma squared is called the within variance. Now, more in, in matrix notation or matrix form, let's look at the model. First, let's let tau, uh, you know, the vector tau, equal tau 1, tau 2, to tau A. So it's it's a vector of these uh, treatment levels or factor levels. So we write Y equals X beta plus epsilon and here the um, this can be thought of, the X can be thought of as a column of ones and then Z. And Z is we're using that notation from the, the one-way ran one way fixed effects model where it you know it's a matrix of ones but you know depending upon if you're in treatment one or treatment two and you do this multiplication it picks off the right treatment so uh, the beta parameter consists of the first component mu and then then the tau uh, components tau one tau through so that's tau you know the vector sign plus air and then when you do this multiplication, you get mu times the one vector and z times tau plus epsilon. Now, the tau is a multivariate normal with mean zero and variance covariance matrix sigma tau squared i. So the you know tau i and tau j are independent. Uh, the epsilon terms are multivariate normal, zero, uh, variance, covariance, matrix, sigma squared i. The tau and the epsilons are independent. Now, this is what z looks like. So it's a vector of ones, and there's n of them because we have a sample size of n from, you know, the, fact, the first factor level, one, or treatment one. There's in, there's in here and, it, and it's uh, what we call block diagonal and and there's ones here. Now z times z you get um, 
a matrix of ones, like a little subsection. It's a little matrix of n by n matrix of ones. And u here, like if it's u n, that means it's n by n. But sometimes you can have a matrix that's rectangular, and then you put the column size up here and the row size here, but it's left off, then you assume it's square. So this is block diagonal with uh, un down the diagonals. U is this, this matrix of all ones. Now, if we were to take sigma trans, or sigma, z transpose z, then it ends up being uh, n times the identity matrix. So when we calculate this perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of z, this piece in here, z prime z is n times i. So when you take the inverse, the n becomes 1 over n, and then you get i, inverse i is i, and then it's just z. So you end up with a block diagonal matrix of 1 over n times un, which it can also be thought of as this, you know, just this by itself. Uh, now, where m is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x, now that's kind of interesting because x consists of a, a vector of ones and then the z matrix, but that but one is actually a linear combination of these columns, so you can create this perpendicular projection matrix on this subset. The vector space spanned by z and x are identical, so that's and this is easier because you you there's a inverse where if you use x, then you have to use what's called a generalized inverse. And, and this, a lot of this is discussed in the first mini-series on one-way fixed effects and over. J is this, so it's a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of ones. It could also be, th you know, one transpose one is um, n times a, right? Because there's n a of these a treatments and then n in observations or at replicas within each treatment and the inverse that's how this one over n a and you get u n a now j is a perpendicular projection makes some column space of ones now column space of one is a subset of the column space of x and so i have a nice theorem in perpendicular projection matrix it's, it's another video that if you look at this difference then it's a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of 1 with respect to the column space of M or the column space of X. So if you take a, a dangling vector, Y vector, and then left multiply it by this, then it shoves it down into the column space of X, but it's orthogonal to the column space of 1's. That's what this perpendicular projection matrix does. Uh, now let's just go through some properties here. The expected value of Y is this is a constant so it comes out front remember the tiles are random variables so we have to think about the expectation of it the z the, con the design matrix out front is constant um, the expected value of each of these are zero so we're just left with mu uh, times the one vector the variance of y the constant doesn't play a part so it comes into this and this and since they're independent there's no covariance now this z comes out front and transposed out back, that's what this is, and this. Oh, I don't go one step further. So, well, the variance of tau is sigma tau squared times i. So the sigma tau can, squared can come out front and the i kind of goes away. So it's sigma, sigma tau squared times z times z transpose plus sigma squared i. Now, if we if we condition on tau, that means these are treated like constants, then we actually get back into the one-way fixed effects ANOVA, right? We're, we're assuming they're fixed. So the expected value and variance in this case should equal the previous case, and it does. So this is constant, and then since this is a constant, it comes out in the expectation, and then we get uh, expected value of epsilon given tau, but they're independent, so it's just the expected value of epsilon and then and this is zero so this is this but then that can be thought of as as this except for that's a vector of ones not mu and so 
let me write it in pencil so this is a one vector and then that multiplication you get this back but this is just X and this is just beta so it becomes unbiased for X beta now the variance um, the constant parts go away and we're just left with this they're independent so it's this the variance of epsilon vector is sigma squared I um, that tells me why given tau is multivariate normal with mean x beta and variance covariance made to sigma squared i. Now the covariance between any two observations, um, if we plug in y, what is for you know yij, and then we call this ykl, so they're different observations. And one thing to think about is when you're taking observations, you're randomly obtaining them and then assigning them treatment so they're independent so the covariance should be um, pretty close to zero so when you do this uh, covariance you, you get rid of the constants so then you take the covariance of this and that which is what this is the covariance of this and that which is what this is and the covariance of these two covariance of these and that's what these are now you have to think about it in cases so if i is not equal to k so um, up here i and k so this is remember i and k represent treatment so if they're different we're not even in the same treatment group or treatment arm so it, it's the covariance is zero they're, we're taking iid observation so it's zero so let's assume they're equal but then j and l are not equal so it's so i and k are equal that means we're in the same treatment arm j and l are not equal then um, and then we're here so the covariance between these is uh, sigma squared or sigma tau squared this is zero they're independent this is zero and this is, and, they're in, and the epsilons are independent, so that's zero. So it's just sigma tau squared. Now, when I and K are equal, so we're in the same treatment arm, J is equal to L, so it's actually the same observation. So the variance associated with that is... Um, what we looked at earlier it's sigma squared tau plus sigma squared all right so if we do that i and i and uh, k are equal right so this or here so the covariance of this is sigma tau squared these are independent uh, these are independent but here i and k are equal and j and, and l are equal so that's the same the co and the variance associated with epsilon is sigma squared now, if we look at this in vector notation, so this is scalar, and let's do it in vector notation. So the variance of y, and y we said was this, that we got rid of the constant. So the variance goes into this and goes into that, right? So the variance of this is the z comes out front, transpose out back. The variance of tau is sigma tau squared i, and, and the variance of epsilon is, is sigma squared i, the identity matrix. Um, this comes out front, and then remember z and i is block diagonal, and then this can be thought of as block diagonal too with the identity matrix. So then this whole structure becomes block diagonal with sigma squared tau u n. Now remember this matrix is is n a by n a, but it's block diagonal n. So um, each block, it's an n by n, and it goes down, you know, it goes down a times. So the whole structure becomes n a by n a, but it's block diagonal sigma tau squared u n sigma squared i n, not n a. All right. So one more page, and then we'll call it quits. Uh, let's look at the correlation between any two observations. So correlation is the covariance divided by the the uh, standard deviation of the product of the variances and the variance of yij 
times itself, you know, you know, then square root. So you get it squared, then you you, know, you get it once, which is just sigma tau squared plus sigma squared. And then the covariance of this, we spent some time calculating. So the three cases are this, and so we get zero and one. Now what's interesting is this is called the ICC, interclass correlation, because we're in the same treatment arm but different observations and so this is how the observations are correlated it's the ICC the interclass correlation now this last theorem and it's the last one we'll use in parts two and three and four I think so the variance associated with our observation Y we said was this um, now the if we were to take now the perpendicular projection matrix to, on the column space of X is Z times Z transpose divided by N. So if we multiply this by 1, N and divide by N, then that piece becomes M, the perpendicular projection matrix. And then this is just I. Okay. Now the inverse matrix for this is this. So it's uh, 1 over sigma squared i minus this constant times m. So we're going to take the, these multiplied together. Um, I think in a later video I show how to derive this. That's, that, that's actually kind of cool in itself. Um, so let's just take the product of these, show they're independent. So here we have this matrix, here we have this matrix. So now we, you know, we take this matrix times this, we get that this times this, we get this. Now remember, M is a perpendicular projection matrix, so it's idempotent. So M times M is M. And then I times I, we get this. So the sigma squares cancel. And then we get this times this piece, and, and we get you know the, these constants, and then times M. Now, it, in here, we have M, so let's factor it out, and that's what this piece is. And the I comes down. And what's left over are these constants. And when you do the math here, that ends up being zero. So zero times a matrix is zero, and we're left with I. And so these two are inverses of each other. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. The next uh, video, part two, we're going to look at the distributional properties of the sum of squares associated with the one-way random effects ANOVA model. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.